So Baba Karambai will be your speaker. He has almost 30 years of experience in education um, and he has worked in the public school system in Senegal. He's also worked with um, Americans in Senegal, initially through language learning and then eventually leading programs for gap year students and um, cultural exchange students. And with that, that has really inspired him in experiential learning and cultural exchange and how we can use those ways of teaching to engage youth in particular in really important themes. And so today he'll be talking to us about the Senegalese culture, as well as his experience teaching culture exchange programs, and then now kind of how that has inspired his current work. Um, so I'll be sharing the presentation from my screen so that Babakar can make sure that he has a good connection from Senegal to share his story. And so um, if you have any, I'll also be manning the chat. Um, so if you have any questions that come up, you can jump in the chat. Otherwise, um, we can do a Q&A as well and just jump in. So thank you. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome, Babakar. Thank you. Okay, I'll Love start my, sharing my screen, if that's OK. Mm. There we go. So. Mm. Babakar, take us away. Okay, thank you everyone for joining and uh, for your interest also in what I'm doing. So what I would do is to talk about Senegal and then at the same time talk about uh, experiential education and then think about how we do it, then how we can democratize it. And then after the ride, take questions when you have some, and if you have some. Okay, let's get started, please. Okay, so I am going to talk about Senegal using these pictures, and I'm going to start first left or uh, on top. And so this is, we have a picture of griots and uh, they are historians and musicians in West Africa in general, and they not just entertain people, but also preserve history. And everything is done orally and with the help of music. So, and right thereafter below is a picture of initiation uh, in a uh, different ethnic group, an ethnic group. Uh, different from mine, but I've stayed with those people for 10 years in my life, and I know them pretty well. So what I want to talk about is how uh, in traditional Africa and modern Africa too, education is based on orality and trust and, um, and commitment and the production of knowledge is there, but it's through a lot of uh, hands-on learning and a lot of experience in, in experiences. So uh, the the GRIO are not just the historian, but they also are there to teach people about citizenship, praising the praise or the the expected praiseworthy uh, behavior that people should have and that people should imitate. And during initiation is kind of the same thing. It's oral based and it's also uh, educating young uh, boys and turning them into adults through experiences that they have together and that build ties way stronger than you would have with your normal siblings. And uh, it's, education is done through riddles, it's done through contact with nature and uh, it's done also through uh, experiencing and then uh, what you see in this picture is kind of a throne uh, of the, the, the king of the initiation. And what is extraordinary here is uh, the initiate are told to watch out for this crown and it should never ever fall. And someone is holding it, it's very uh, heavy and dancing with that. And so the, the idea is that thing should never fall or hit anything, even a tree or any branch. And sometimes, like you see it, they dance very next to trees and it's pretty powerful to watch them do that. 
and education was also done through apprenticeship. And on the right, there's a picture of uh, a silversmith. And usually what happened is either uh, tra uh, trades are passed from one generation to the other, or people are brought, for instance, to this silversmith by their parents on trust base because they trust not just the professional uh, the, he is, but also the human he is to educate the kid. And uh, educating the kid is not just teaching him a trade, but it's also making sure he has the character he, that goes with it. And sometimes that, that idea of uh, educating full and uh, rounded characters by giving him a job, by teaching him a trade and teaching him character can also go over communities like in the picture right below is me and one of my former students, we became close because she was studying in Dakar and had nowhere to, to, to live and called me. I said, hey, you can stay home I, because I uh, told you and I believe in education, so stay with me. And once you got married, I was asked to perform that ceremony on behalf of the parents. And when the first born was that came, it's named after me and it's a little baba car I'm holding in my hand. So that is Senegal in general, very oral based, trust based, community based and maintaining and cultivating the ties. And that bring us to the next slide. So, and at the center of that communal life and that education is what we call teranga. Roughly, it translates into hospitality, but we don't use hospitality in lieu of teranga because it means way more than that. It's, when you think about teranga, you're thinking about honoring people. You're thinking about uh, showing people the uh, important by virtue of being humans and member of their community. And it's a concentric, it's concentric circles that goes from inner to outer. The inner circle is always uh, in charge and responsible from the outer circle. And, and it's very fluid. You can be uh, in the inner circle, inner circles and also be a, uh, a host and a guest at the same time. Like in this picture, I am, um, uh, we are visiting my sister and I, the village I mentioned earlier, and we are presented with four different lunches and for all the bowls is different lunches from different family. And then even if I am a visitor, I'm acting as a host because my sister is the outer circle. He's a newly arrived family member. So she is on the outer circle and I am presenting her the, the food and she is uh, being grateful and thinking the, the families that have brought us food. And so, and the guest is also at the same time a family member because I was a guest before her, now I'm a family member and next time she comes, she extends that family. And this holds valid when you're uh, a Senegalese visiting your own community or different visiting different communities. There are different ethnic groups and this ethnic group is different. And so it's still valid. And also if you're Westerner and you're doing that, it's the same thing you're visiting. For instance, Elki came and stayed with us and became a family member. And when her mom came, she acted as a host and the mom became the guest and then next time she, the mom, or just moves and closer to the inner circle. And that's, that's uh, very important, that almost sacred. And so that has the power to enrich the host families because they're able to be in contact with different people, different in terms of nationality, gender, ethnicity, and culture, and then learn from them. And it also makes travel through to communities very, very powerful, very easy to the extent that most of the time after a month of, uh, or uh, a week when you ask the student, what's the most important thing, aspect that has changed you, they'll talk about the, they'll use the peeps, so the people. 
and it also allows us to go to organization because it's easy to to build those ties. It's easy to be the guest, and then it's, it's allow us to be able to uh, do that cultural exchange very smoothly and very easily. So that is also important, and that leads us to the next slide. Oh, one thing before we go, and uh, right there below my sister is my mother. And one thing that we've mentioned is like how it makes visiting, uh, being in contact with people, communicating with people and exchanging with people. But for the particular case of my mother, it's like she, for some reason, she did not go to formal school, but she was able to learn, to learn how to read and write and teach me before I went to school because of that same hospitality where people take you in and share whatever they want. And it's not just the food, it's also the knowledge and anything that there is to share. So my mother was able to teach me just because someone took her in and taught her. Yeah. Thank you. Next, that leads us to next. So how do we do it? Uh, uh, in general, and a dragon in particular, because I was for this organization, is we bring people together. And in this picture, you have uh, a family picture at the end of our training, and it's 100 people, at least 20 different nationalities. And you can easily imagine every instructor in that picture speaks at least two languages. I speak three. I have a friend who speaks more four and five. So that's a lot of languages. And it's pretty amazing to be around the fire when conversations happen. And in that smaller in the picture with a smaller number of people, there are people from uh, the Americas, there are people from Africa, there are people from Asia, people in Peru, Brazil, China, Senegal, America, and uh, all faiths, all languages. So this is how you bring people. And when you bring those people together, what do you do? That take us to the next slide. So again, that idea is you, you start making them tra uh, travel to places. So uh, if you look at that map, we have nationalities and countries first for where the students are from and my personal travel, not a lot, but pretty amazing. I was able to visit Senegal uh, uh, and neighboring countries, Guinea and the Gambia. And I was also able to visit the US, stay with families, which, is pretty, which was pretty amazing and pretty revealing and telling and life-changing. And uh, go to Asia and particularly Nepal and uh, right there in the map, so, so that people know is my home country and is the westernmost point in our continental Africa. And I live in the capital city, which is uh, with the westernmost point of Senegal. So it's a, a peninsula, and I live right by the ocean. I can hear it at times from my house. So, what do we do? Let's see the next slide. So we take people to remote places so that they have these uh, random encounters with people. And the people they, they encounter tell them about what they hold dear. And, it's, and then all of a sudden you put those people you talk to and you have meaningful conversation with like at the center of your attention and that is pretty much valorizing. And I have been able to go, like I said, to places, Asia, in the top picture when I'm seated, it's in Nepal and I'm on, on, on a mountain. And I'm, after my, my friend explained everything to me, I sat there uh, um, meditating because reflection is very, it's a very important aspect of it. And you, come, you go close to nature uh, because also nature has this power of teaching us things and uh, that at, at time can bring us to tears. And the picture below, we are uh, talking, I have my friend that I have met in Nepal. He's from India. And uh, 
with the group of people is uh, in the village where people are explaining to our student about initiation. And we have ran random beautiful classes like in the picture right there. And we are at, our, at the mouth of the waterfall and we are also listening to people tell us why this waterfall is important. It's not just water, it's not just a source of water, it's not just nature. It's a place that has uh, a, a precise role in their life and a, a particular importance for sometimes religious and spiritual reason. And uh, on the right of the slide, I am listening to someone in Nepal. And that person is so close to me because we are all Muslim and we are in a mosque. But he is very different from me. He is from another nationality. We share religion. We share those basic things about religion, but we can't talk to each other because we don't have a common language. But the, by the fact that we have those uh, cultural keys and codes, we can do that communication. When what we exchange is just what's important for him and me because the, of the, the language and. Uh, then a friend also helped with translation. So travel and reflection and discussion and closeness to nature. And that, let's see the next slide, please. And like I said, you go to places, you visit nature, but also you're able to engage with community and participate and try and help make happen what is important for them and then listen why is important. And so uh, on top, I am with uh, teachers in Guinea and right below, uh, it's a group of students that we've met as a reserve in the Gambia, different African countries. And the, 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 the clicking it happened when we heard that one of the students is Sophie and one of the Gambian students, is, uh, her name is Sophie, and my student name is Sophie, and Sophie is also my mom's name. So we start talking about that, and we start talking about name names. We, talk, we start talking about why my name is important for me, or why your name is important for me. And uh, then when we engage with the community, we're able to try and practice with them and try new things, things that we may, we may not, have done before or may have seen or may not have seen. And on, on the top of the, uh, on the right, you have Elke's sister try carrying my, I think, daughter on her back. This is how mothers carry babies traditionally in Senegal. So you gotta try that and see, not just hear about it, but feel it, experience that. And then below there is two American young women that I've met, which name, whose name I have forgotten, but we met on a bus and they talked to me because someone told them, hey, these guys knows a, a, a lot about religion and spirituality and they wanted to hear, one of them wanted to hear. So we had this beautiful conversation when we shared and what she told me, what I shared made us very emotional and we took a picture exchange name and contact and i lost her name and number and so this is the only mem memory of her i don't know where she is and also it's amazing when you see older people like try also those things is and uh, how beautiful it is and how I mean, inspiring it is. And Elke's dad playing the drum with my dad at a religious ceremony and the whole community is around and happy that people come to them, not judging them, but coming to participate and try new things with them and enjoy that practice with them, which is pretty amazing and inspiring. Next slide, please. And there's also the engagement with R. And um, you see a picture on the left of me um, meeting and talking to one of my, all my preferred Senegalese artists, young, and 
who came even to us to share because we expressed curiosity and he wanted to share. And, and then the student also practicing, learning not about how to play a drum, but how even to make it, what goes in the making. And, um, right, and below we have two young girls who, uh, after visiting Gore, which who were known for slavery and uh, all the pain that goes with it, but also engaging in a very creative way and a positive way with it. And then at the end of, of it, because we have this particular approach where we say, hey, it's not uh, something that is is something that is universal that belong to all humans that we should analyze under that aspect. And then we also do a lot of uh, practice and discussion around comparative religion and philosophy, because it's also is important in this in the global context and current issues. So uh, Naomi is participating here and holding a baby being named a newborn baby and we visit mosque next to uh, it is mosque a, a church right below Naomi and a straw mosque and I also have visited temples with students so we go to all those places and then they able to visit see the emotion see the whatever is attached to it the reasoning the philosophy the theology so that we can bring uh, understanding global understanding to it so, and at the end of the day, because of all of it, what you end up seeing is transformation. And it's pretty powerful transformation when people go to tears most of the time. It's not just the instructors, it's not just the people who are teaching us, it's also the people who are, who are taught thing. And there are multiple times when what you hear from the student is so powerful that it brings you to tears. And there are times when it's like you don't even want, you can't hear it. You can just can feel it. And that, that feeling, that, those vibration just brings the tears. And I think one of the most powerful reflections that I have heard from a student is someone who stayed two weeks here. And at the end of the very last morning, he said, I have, I'm in this impression that I have matured so much in these 15 days that it's no longer seems like days, it's years, almost a decade of maturing. So this is what happened most of the time. So there, those situation when magic happened and you feel, there's a lot of maturity that is produced, resilience, empowerment, and acceptance of self and others. And it's very much community building. So, and it's powerful beyond words. More of you who have done that, your exchange know that and, and it's, it's able to happen. So now what? Let's see next slide, please. So then I have been thinking because of the beauty of that, how do we make sure we have more local students and more local communities and better participation? Because as we've seen, most of it happened because of our ability to travel and our ability to engage when we travel and our ability to meet people who are in remote places. So what we've been trying to do over the years is bring local students and uh, so that this, they can exchange meaningfully. And wherever we go, we have the locals at time, uh, as much as we can participate in our programming not g and be learning with them. And they also the language body system where you pair students so that they, they, they learn together. And we, we do support host communities uh, who express curiosity. And we like in the image on the uh, right, 
we travel with the host siblings. But, and my question has always been, how can we do more? And, and then I reflect back at what we, we are doing. This is why it's important. We travel. So uh, travel is important. We go to remote places. It's important. We go to people that are very, that are, can be different from us. Not very different, not actually very different, but somehow different from us. Different cultures, different ethnicity, different faith. So that ability, not just to host, but like in the Teranga uh, concept to be uh, a guest and a host at the same time and to be in that fluidity, then this is what we want to add to, to, to that thing because the, 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 the exchange has already is, is there, the hosting is there, but it's like how we also can be guests and navigate the complexity of the world. And how can we do it? How has been a long standing question that we've asked for years, we've uh, tried to solve for years, and we've come to uh, this new concept uh, this year. And, and it's in the next slide, please. And uh, it's the, the pro project we we call the new Jange C is that we in, in it's a wall of centers that means that we learn from it. So what do we learn from is in reintroducing in 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 the life of the student who are just going to do formal education, experiential learning. So and those are alternative forms of knowledge, but they're also not just have proven to be very effective, but it's also rooted in Senegalese culture. And uh, that knowledge and is also in the out there in, the, in nature and in the community. And then we can learn from the outside world. We can learn from musicians, we can learn from participating in ceremonies, communities. Uh, and also doing meeting with uh, important cultural figures uh, of the community. We also can learn through civic engagement, like how, how serving. That is very important in Senegalese culture, but it's not as normalized as should be. People just do it naturally, but putting it at the center and doing that service learning aspect can be very uh, gratifying and also encouraging uh, in country travel because of urbanization and the art touch it and the how uh, the Senegal is now that is um, fairly more uh, more difficult than used to be but we have a lot of uh, ethnic groups and sometimes they're very different because some of them are from down south and have migrated up north and uh, speak very different languages and have very significantly different cultures so that is why we have this project when now we are not just hosting but we are having using that fluidity we're doing the it just Senegalese totally Senegalese way, where it's host, gas, fluid, and uh, also going back to that community trust-based learning uh, aspect of Senegalese culture. So that's our project. We have the WOW website. And if you want to know more and are curious, and uh, we, I also can, we can answer questions later if people have, and my, you, my email is in, in this next slide and yeah that's roughly what i wanted to share and uh i'm waiting for questions if there is any hey babakar it's john thank you so much for your presentation i'm i has just i thought a number of times just in hearing you speak 
and seeing the photos, what a different pace of life occurs in Senegal than in the United States and how you're just a peaceful person to listen to. I feel like my stress level has come down just by watching your presentation. So I can only imagine being involved in one of your programs. One question I had was, is there an age limit to participating? What are the ages of, of people, students who you work with? So, well, our, you mean in our project or in general? Uh, yeah, I guess both. Yeah, in general, we uh, work with uh, um, high school, middle school, and even college students because the, the, our bridge program is for Princeton University students. But in this Senegalese context, we've, uh, we are trying to work with middle school uh, students and uh, because it's like where they're most curious and where it's probably more beneficial to, 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 uh, to encourage that curiosity and also to build that, citizen, that global citizenship responsibility, philosophy and ideology and uh, practices so that they, they are more open and uh, also because they, they, they also learning new languages, new things in school and they're very curious because of that. And uh, we'll have probably a subgroup because of we are trying to work with host families and because some of them have younger kids and we, want, we don't want them to be left behind, we'll also take those into account. Would you consider working with someone who was in middle school 40 years ago? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, yeah. The, the, it's like, again, in the picture with Elke's dad and sister is, we, it's, it's always when people express that curiosity and that willingness to go and, and discover and meet people and uh, share, then it's, 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 it's amazing. Yeah, you know, I feel like your your program is focused on students, but you you could do this program for any age. It just feels like such a beautiful, beautiful uh, cultural experience and introduction to the Senegalese way of life and the people, the languages, and whatnot. So, yeah. um, let's see who else who else said thank you. Who else has a question? If you do, just take yourself off of um, mute. I have a Olga? question. I didn't yeah. want to. <laughs> I don't know how relevant it is to the rest, so that's why I didn't jump on it because I, I sure I'm not here to, to waste your time or something. But um, thank you, Babakar. And, and um, I travel sometimes with a group of Minnesota leaders, and these are adults. But mm -hmm. the reason why we take the group to another part of the world is to learn and implement uh, new ideas and new concepts in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, would Senegal be a good place to take my group to? Could, these are adults, right? These are, uh, it's not youth. And do you think you could potentially help me um, explore that option? I think it's definitely a great idea because it's, I mean, it's when we get out of our routines and fam familiarity of our world and its organization that we, we start learning because it's, it's, it start getting new and can be exciting. And usually I teach Wolof, which is my native language. It's only spoken in three countries in the world. It's a very local language, but I told the student one reason I'm teaching you and I want you to pay attention is so that you have, a, you can imagine and try a new way of speaking. It's told the language is at times very uh, confusing because we don't have, sometimes it's like the, it's the pronouns that change, not the verbs. And usually that not, that's not how language works. You change the verb and you maintain the pronoun. So those things, and I do believe in that. And I have learned a lot just being out, out of my routine and uh, familiar world. And 
just one thing that happened is I went, uh, there's a picture of me in Nepal and right after sitting and meditating because it's, Senegal is super flat and yeah. in the Sahel and Nepal is mountains and a lot of water and too green. And one thing is like, I just bow down and touch the, my, uh, the, uh, the sand, the land with my forehead because I wanted to that reconnection and claiming that thing and it's pretty amazing, believe me. So yes, and uh, uh, I can help and Senegal is maybe Elke and Nelly will tell and that can be more, <laughs> uh, had more power because it's my country, but it has that power. I have trouble in two different areas, but yeah, it changed me a lot. Okay, I'll keep shared um, Babakar's email address so you can be in contact to follow up. Thank you. Thank Mark. you. Thank you. Babakar, thank you for your presentation. Um, your words are very peaceful and you have such a connection to nature. Is that, uh, is that something a, a Senegalese, I mean, t t tell me about that, like in all your travels, I mean, do you see that that's a big difference uh, in your upbringing and how you see the world and maybe how you center yourself? So nature is very important in, 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 in African culture in general, and even animals have family names. So the lion is, for instance, Yai is one of the most popular family names. And if you're, and people have totems. So in my family, we have, it's a bird. So that bird becomes automatically sacred for me. And uh, there's also this feeling and thinking that you, you, you can't access to nature unless someone allows you that access. It can be God. If we're Muslim, we say prayers. If in, we are in traditional Africa, we say something. So that approach is, nature is not for us just to kind of go and take. So that time when even the government will ask ceremonies performed because they're building something and they are having all these issues, they'll have someone perform a ceremony. So that is very, very present in, in our daily life. And the other aspect of it is, uh, I am of a Sufi uh, upbringing. My dad is a religious teacher. And uh, so that is also another layer that adds to it. And because in Sufi world, they, you are told the God has written wisdom in nature. So, and you, there's a time when you get to learn that wisdom through nature. And uh, there's deep connection in, in nature. So. This is, is, is very pleasant. And there's a prayer almost for everything. When, we, when I was young and would go even swim in the ocean, there's a thing to do and to say before you can get to swim. All those things are there. <laughs> can, can you share one with the group, just in, in, your, in the local language? So one thing that we do is, for instance, when we are going to swim, one thing is we'll usually ask to draw a star and a moon and then jump over it. And for instance, the, the other thing, verbal, uh, is like all this, the, the thorny uh, plants, uh, their last name is lay. So you'll say bismillah, lay, before you're able to take advantage, like to take anything from that plant. No, me, I'm wondering if you could say a few words about your experience. Yes, of course. Um, it was the most absolutely life-changing of years in, um, in every capacity. Um, Babakar said to me at the beginning of um, my time in Senegal, you have to step outside of the house in order to see inside the house. Um, and I believe this very strongly that in both our self-realization um, in our understanding of our cultural um, and social circumstances to really make sense of it, we have to see 
um, a different world, a different way of living, of speaking, of breathing. Um, so in particular, Wolof, um, the local language was to me felt like the door to Senegal, the door to deep engagement with my host family. Um, my host father happens to be Babakar's brother. And so Babakar is also my host uncle, um, my father. Um, and both the linguistic immersion and the cultural immersion were deeply impactful and um, have shaped every aspect of both what I study, where I hope to go professionally, um, personally on the deepest of levels, exploration of, of Taranga. What does real hospitality mean? Um, what does it really mean to, to, to give to others, um, to engage with the people around us as a community, um, have impacted my familial relationships, my social relationships, um, and continue to um, allow me to, to question the deepest aspects of how I live and, and, and who I am. Um, so I, I don't have uh, enough gratitude to Babakar for, for this experience, um, to Alki too, for this experience. And I'm very happy to answer more specific questions as well. Yeah, well, just one follow-up and the beautiful, and thank you, I, I can just hear the passion in your voice. How long was your experience? How long were you in Senegal? I was there for nine months, um, and then I went back a year later for a two-week visit, um, and I am looking for all the ways to go back, um, potentially exploring Fulbright opportunities after I graduate for another year-long um, experience or longer. Who knows? Other questions? Okay, maybe the same question for you. You know, what were some of the, you were there for a much longer period of time, but what, uh, you know, what are some experiences that really stick out for you in relation to Babacar or otherwise about the experience? Um, yeah, I would say that I really, um, I had already spent about two years in Senegal cumulatively before I met Babacar. And then he like reignited my passion for Senegal and the local cultures. Um, and really just encouraged, I felt like he constantly encouraged me to like question what I had thought I learned, if that makes sense, like to continually engage in that process. Um, also, he's like an amazing, incredibly gifted educator. And um, watching him teach really inspired me and in how I teach. And he showed me really that all of us can be teachers. We just have to be willing to ask questions and to not expect an answer that not to expect a specific answer or not to expect any answer, but to just engage yourself and other, your students in questioning and then do the dialogue and you might never get to the final answer. And this is like much more of a liberal arts perspective. I was never very gifted in the sciences. So I understand that, you know, two plus two at some point does equal four, but you know, on the other hand, does it always like, what are we counting and how are we counting it? And you know, in Senegal, they count with base five. I didn't know languages did that, you know? So six is five and one. And, and I didn't understand that you could do that. I thought that, you know, everything, like in the US, we have a base 10 system. So even that, like it, it was a really great inquiry. And um, also what I love about working with Babakar is that John, when you said he is peaceful, I just had a laugh. Cause like, well, that's what we always say about Babakar. <laughs> <laughs> just like Bob Carr, you know, we're really stressed. Can you just like bring us down? Like, yeah. he's just like, really? You need me to like constantly do that? Like, he, like Bob Carr, it's just like, he, it comes so naturally to him. And when you're running, when you're like a person in a new culture to have someone that you go to, who's just like super peaceful and um, who doesn't put a lot of stress on things is really important. Yeah. His email is Mad Babs because that's his like self-proclaimed nickname because he's kind of crazy. He's like this crazy guy in Senegal who like um, doesn't want to move to the America permanently, even though he speaks English. He loves languages. He wants to take a 12-hour bus ride to a rural area and hike up a mountain, but people left that mountain ages ago and moved to the city. Why would you want to go back? You know, things like this. Like he's that crazy guy who's willing to just talk things out and figure things out. So that's where that Mad Babs comes from. It's a good way to remember his email. <laughs> so, um, and actually I do have um, one question is, 
Babakar, I'm curious um, what, what have you learned by working with all, well, we call it, we're two Bobs, so like the Senegalese equivalent of gringo. Um, we're foreigners. So what have you learned with working with so many two Bobs? So people from other countries and why are you willing to put up with us? Because we're a lot of work um, and we keep on making mistakes. And I know I have insulted some imam somewhere <laughs> at some point and still don't know it. So why do you do what you do and what have you learned and what inspires you, I guess, to deal with all that? I mean, it's like, for me, it's my way <clears throat> of stepping out up and meeting people that are different with me is then I can step out without troubling. And uh, that is very important. And I, then I can travel. It is also that deep belief that, uh, and uh, that I expressed to the first American uh, student that I met that we are, we are a family. And uh, then it's like my American branch of um, the family. And I have a lot of love and respect for that branch. And, it's, and yes, it's hard because it's when you're, it's one of the things that turn into a radio show with one of the students is when, a, when you're, you're raised by a community, you have a truth and it's the truth. And then, then you think the whole world is like that. And we are all like that. So, and when we see other people, we learn different things. And yes, it's hard because Americans can be yes, do it, super active, super engaged in things. And you, it's hard to tell them, hey, you got to breathe. <laughs> before, take a deep breath before you go. And they are very much in, 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 their, in their brains, which is important but also which can detach you from your heart. So, and, and they, what is amazing and beautiful is that people are able to do that. And uh, once you, 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 you say that, but it's also how we engage the world. We want to understand that. So we get to say, okay, let's take a deep breath. And you ask those millions of questions and what, what happened is always beautiful. This is why I have this long lasting friendship with people and connections with them. But we are, we are all, I am Senegalese, I am slower. And uh, I was taught to be more peaceful and I like it and it's beautiful, but if I also get to step out of my house and see the house and then rebuild that, that house is what, what I've said to Naomi. Let's rebuild that house. And probably if I do rebuild my house, there would be an American side to it. And I will rebuild my house. Thank you. One or two more questions from anyone. I, um, I have one final question for you, Babakar. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I don't think it's any secret, even in Senegal, that um, people in the United States are under an extreme amount of stress right now. The political mm -hmm. situation is horrible. The, you know, it's just a very, very stressful time. So Elka, uh, Elka like, mentioned questions that you, you, know, you oppose to your students. What are some questions that you can pose to us that might make it a little easier to get through the uh, what's a, a really hard time right now for us? I mean, I think this situation is revealing how this world, we've taken everything for granted. And we have created system that we think will of themselves automatically do good. And then for, for me, this is a wake up call saying, hey, why do you dare think that, that a system can do that? And then you're no longer participating as humans and imprinting that your life uh, as it is. 
So it's, it can be a lot of anxiety and despair when you think about it, but it's also, if you think about like a person started it, then I am a, another person, then I'm different. And I want to start something different. And what is it that I want to start? And why do I think in what ways is my voice less important or my action less important? And how can I find the extra strength and the extra, like, the thing that will make my voice res resonate and my ideas heard, then is where we can, what we can do as human. And, and there definitely da uh, a possibility for us to do that. And it all, all has started with someone saying, I think that, and this is my belief and shouting loud enough, but it can end with us saying, this is my belief. This is what I think is better. And then trying to make our voice louder and our actions impactful. Yeah, and- yeah, Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> just that. Really, really great. Um, perfect timing on the presentation. I, I feel like, you know, we learned about your program, but we just learned a lot more as well. So really, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. And mm -hmm.